Hi there. Thank you for watching this clip on how to find domain, range, function, and inverse function. Let's get started. This one is a part two, a general approach. This is a three part series on this topic. So let's get started. We're given function here and a funny interesting restriction. Let's talk about why this restriction is important in finding the inverse function. But let's get started in that. Graph this function first. The vertex is at minus three and positive two. So we have a quadratic that's facing upward with the vertex at minus three and two. So by all means, looking at the function itself, okay, the domain has no restriction, which means unless they give you this one, x is really belongs to the real number, okay? But for us, for this particular problem, we have to deal with f inverse of x. Okay, well, I'll explain why this restriction is so important. Okay, now since we're given that, so for, for this particular problem, we're go only given half of this curve. x is bigger than minus 3, so this half is actually gone. Okay. For this particular problem, for this f, the domain, we're going to have to write it out as the way we were given. x belongs to a real number such that x is bigger than minus 3. Okay, now let's go over how to find inverse. Okay, first thing to do with inverse is, let's copy the y is equal to x plus 3 squared plus 2. We're going to replace x and y. Now, if you re whether you replace before or after you solved for the variable, it makes really no difference. Actually, I tell my students I prefer them to solve for x and then after they solved for x, and then you replace it. But if your teacher tells the other way around, it's no, dif no big difference. So let's go along with the general approach. Teacher asks students usually to swap it first. Okay. Now the reason we swap it is really for cosmetic, mathematically cosmetic reason. We are in tune to have x as the variable, y as the dependent variable. Okay, so we're going to go solve for y. I have x minus 2 equal to y plus 3 squared. I'm going to take a radical root on this, and then my minus 3. This becomes my y. Okay, this one, this y is not the same of this y. So basically I'm saying inverse of x is equal to radical of x minus 2 minus 3. Okay, this is my inverse function. Now going back to earlier, why for this original function is so important x is bigger than minus 3? Because the original curve looked like this. Okay, giving its inverse, here's the vertex, giving its inverse if we had not restricted, this inverse would have reflected it like that. Okay, this is no longer a function unless we restricted x was bigger than three. Okay, so we have to have only a single branch of the curve for this to be a function, f of the inverse to be a function. Okay, all right. Now let's take a look at the inverse over here. What are the domain for this one? Okay, domain. Since x is minus 2 is under the radical roots, x still belongs to the real number, and x has to be bigger than equal to 2 to keep the radical from falling into negative. Okay. Given that, then our range, which should be the domain of the function itself, since we're dealing with the inverse, our range is going to be y such that y belongs to r and y has to be bigger than minus 3. The reason that the smallest that this one can ever get is a 0. Okay, when it gets to be 0, then minus 3 is as large as I'm going to get it. Okay, or as small. Minus 3 is as small as I'm going to get it. All right, hope this helped. Hi, I'm Dr. Pan, host of Tucson Math Doc channel on YouTube. As always, I love to hear about your math questions. Until next time, have a confident day.